First Story by David Rodriguez New York City, the city that never sleeps, had its own unique allure even in the darkest hours of the night. On one particularly chilly evening, I found myself wandering alone through dimly lit streets, the faint glow of streetlights casting eerie shadows on the pavement. The city's bustling energy had given way to an unsettling stillness, and I couldn't help but feel a creeping sense of unease. As I walked, the click of my heels on the pavement echoed through the silent streets, creating an eerie symphony of solitude. The shadows seemed to come alive, shifting and dancing with every step. It was in those moments that I became acutely aware of how vulnerable I was. I first noticed him when I turned a corner into an even darker, more deserted street. A man stood there, bathed in the weak glow of a flickering street light. His face was obscured by the shadows, but I could feel his gaze on me, cold and penetrating. I quickened my pace, telling myself it was just a passerby, but my heart raced nonetheless. The footsteps behind me grew closer, each step echoing louder in the stillness. Panic set in as I realized I was being followed. I dared not look back, fearing what I might see. The stranger remained relentless, his presence an oppressive weight on my shoulders. I turned into another street, hoping to lose him in the maze of alleys and shadows. But he stayed with me, always just a few steps behind. My breaths came in short, frantic gasps, and I knew I needed to find help. Desperation drove me to seek refuge in a nearby convenience store that was still open. I burst inside, my heart pounding, and begged the cashier to call the police. The stranger had followed me to the entrance but hesitated to enter the store. He watched me with cold, unblinking eyes as the cashier dialed 911. The police arrived within minutes, and the stranger was taken into custody. As they led him away, his gaze remained fixed on me, sending shivers down my spine. I couldn't help but wonder what his intentions had been and what might have happened if I hadn't found refuge in that convenience store. Weeks later, I received a mysterious letter in the mail. Inside was a photograph of the stranger, along with a note that simply read, I'll be watching. The sender was unknown, and the chilling message left me with a lingering sense of dread, a reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places, even in the heart of a bustling metropolis. To this day, I am haunted by the memory of that chilling encounter on the dark streets of New York City, a reminder that safety in the city can be an illusion, and that some nightmares have no end. Second Story by Sarah Evans Driving a taxi in the bustling city of Chicago, I had seen my fair share of late-night passengers— but one particular fair would forever haunt my memories. It was a quiet, chilly night, and I was parked near an empty street corner when a man dressed in a long, dark coat approached. He got into the back seat without a word and simply gave me an address that was unfamiliar to me. I followed his directions, weaving through the labyrinthine streets of the city. The passenger remained silent, his face shrouded in the dim glow of the streetlights. With every turn we took, I became increasingly disoriented, as if the city itself was conspiring against me. The man's destination seemed to change multiple times during the ride, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was deeply wrong. We passed through desolate neighborhoods and abandoned buildings, far from the bustling city center. Panic gnawed at me as I realized I was lost. Suddenly, the passenger spoke, his voice low and cryptic. He instructed me to stop the car in front of a decrepit building, its windows boarded up. He got out, leaving the door ajar, and disappeared into the darkness. Fearful for my safety, 
I locked the doors and watched as the man disappeared into the shadows. Minutes turned into hours as I waited for him to return, but he never did. I finally mustered the courage to drive away from that forsaken place, my heart pounding with dread. Months passed, and the memory of that eerie night continued to haunt me. One evening, I picked up a passenger whose destination was that very same abandoned building. It was the same man, dressed in the same dark coat. My heart raced as he got into the taxi once more. But this time, he didn't give me an address. Instead, he simply whispered, We have unfinished business. As we drove through the dark streets of Chicago, a sense of impending doom hung in the air. To this day, I can't forget the unsettling encounters with that mysterious passenger, a reminder that the darkness in the city can take many forms, and that some mysteries are best left unsolved. Third Story by Emma Williams London had always felt like a safe and familiar city to me, but one fateful night changed everything. I had stayed late at work, and as I walked home alone through the dark, winding streets, the faint glow of streetlights casting eerie shadows, I couldn't shake a creeping sense of unease. The streets were nearly deserted, and the only sound was the soft rhythm of my own footsteps. But as I turned a corner, I noticed a man dressed in a long coat, his face hidden beneath the brim of a hat. He was following me, matching my stride with uncanny precision. Fear gripped me as I realized that he seemed to know my every move. I turned into alleys and side streets, hoping to shake him off, but he stayed with me, relentless and unfazed. His presence was suffocating, and I couldn't understand why he was fixated on me. Desperation drove me to seek refuge in a nearby pub. I burst inside, my breathless pleas for help catching the attention of the patrons. The stranger hesitated at the entrance, his eyes locked onto mine, before finally retreating into the darkness. The police were called, and I gave them a description of the man who had been stalking me. But despite their efforts, he was never found. To this day, I live with the haunting memory of that relentless stranger who pursued me through the dark streets of London. Weeks later, I received a mysterious package in the mail. Inside was a photograph of the stranger, along with a note that simply read, I'll be watching. The sender was unknown, and the chilling message left me with a lingering sense of dread, a reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places even in the heart of a bustling city. Fourth Story by Michael Turner Los Angeles, the city of dreams, can quickly become a city of nightmares, as I discovered one fateful night. I had been out late with friends and decided to take a shortcut through a dimly lit alley to get home faster. The alley was deserted, and the only sound was the distant hum of the city. I walked briskly, the shadows closing in around me. It was then that I heard footsteps behind me, growing closer with each passing moment. I turned to see a group of men approaching, their faces concealed by hoodies and scarves. Panic coursed through me as I realized that I was trapped, the alleyway offering no escape. They encircled me, their intentions menacing and clear. Without a word, they demanded my wallet and phone, their eyes filled with malice. I complied, my hands trembling as I handed over my belongings. It was clear that they had no intention of letting me go unscathed. As the minutes passed, they taunted me, their threats becoming increasingly ominous. It was a nightmarish ordeal, and I couldn't help but wonder if I would make it out of that alley alive. Eventually, they grew bored and allowed me to leave, but not before warning me to never return. I stumbled out of the alley, shaken to my core, and made my way home. 
Months passed, and I tried to put the terrifying encounter behind me. But one evening, as I walked home through a different part of the city, I saw them again the same group of men, their faces hidden beneath hoodies, standing in the shadows of an alley. They watched me with cold, unblinking eyes, a chilling reminder that the darkness in Los Angeles could take many forms. To this day, I can't forget the terror I felt in that dimly lit Los Angeles alley, a chilling reminder that danger can lurk just around the corner, even in the heart of a bustling city. Fifth Story by Emily Johnson San Francisco, with its picturesque streets, had always felt like a safe place to me, but one late-night jog changed everything. I had taken a detour through a quiet neighborhood, hoping to enjoy the serenity of the night. The streets were deserted, and the only sound was the soft rhythm of my own footsteps. But as I turned a corner, I stumbled upon a scene that would haunt my nightmares. A group of people dressed in dark clothing surrounded a car, their faces concealed by masks. Panic coursed through me as I realized that something sinister was happening before my eyes. I ducked behind a nearby tree and watched in horror as they smashed the car's windows and rummaged through its contents. The tension in the air was palpable, and I knew I had to leave before they spotted me. I turned to slip away, but a twig snapped beneath my foot, and the sound seemed to echo in the silence. The group turned in my direction, their eyes locking onto mine with an unsettling intensity. Fear gripped me as I realized I had been seen. Without hesitation, I sprinted away from the scene, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't stop running until I reached the safety of my own home. I called the police, and they arrived at the scene shortly after. But by the time they got there, the group had vanished without a trace. Weeks later, I received a mysterious letter in the mail. Inside was a photograph of one of the masked figures, along with a note that simply read, You saw too much. The sender was unknown, and the chilling message left me with a lingering sense of dread, a reminder that darkness could lurk even in the most idyllic of neighborhoods, shattering the illusion of safety in the city. Thank you for sticking with us through the whole video. Also, I recommend you this video you see on screen, one of the scariest on my channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. This helps me bring you more thrilling content every day. If this video sent shivers down your spine, let me know in the comments.